Hi there, welcome to this build of a 40 inch wingspan Keelcraft Gypsy. Now this is a, a lovely design by Bill Dean from 1949. Now I started building this, and I say I started, uh, I started building this from a Ripmax kit which I had a few issues with and, and problems including the plans. So I downloaded the plans from Outer Zone. So, and they're the original plan, so if you want to build this, it's a really good source. And I've also had to use a few of my own materials because the, uh, the kit wasn't quite uh, as I would have liked it. I will be doing a full review of the kit when I finish the build, and you may have seen some of my other comments in some of the previous videos. But anyway, it's a lovely aircraft, and I really enjoy getting it built, and you can see we've got more or less the skeleton of this plane pulled together now and we're almost ready to start uh, start thinking about getting some of it covered but there's one more thing that we've got to do first now there's one really important distinction that separates my vintage models from any of my other models like my speedy b or my patterns plane or flying wing and it's quite a significant difference i mean there's lots of differences as you know but the one significant difference is that if I'm flying my patterns plane, my speedy bee or my wing, and I put the transmitter down and decide to go home, then before I even got maybe three or four meters, that plane is going to have crashed. If I'm flying, say, my uh, Diamond Demon, my Quaker or this, if I'm flying one of my vintage models and I do the exact same thing and I walk away, chances are I'll have got to the car park and driven halfway down the road, if not got home before it actually comes down. Because some of these models, they get caught in a thermal, they can stay up there for a long time. And they are inherently stable, uh, stable because of the dihedral. And it's this concern that I don't want to lose one of my vintage models if I have a, uh, a a problem with the radio equipment, maybe I lose contact with the receiver, the battery lead as a fault, something like that. It's not going to come down, it's just going to stay up there and the chances are it will disappear. And the last thing I want to do is lose one of these models. I mean, the, my Diamond Demon, I'm looking at it, it's hanging up over there. I mean, it's got that lovely Bantam 19 engine in the front. I, I would be so upset if I lost that. And so one of the things I've started doing is in installing a GPS tracker, a micro tracker, into my vintage models so that if I lose them, then I can always find them or hopefully find them. I did lose my, um, uh, my Tomboy Senior once, which I did manage to get back, but it's a horrible feeling when you lose the model. So I'm going to make provision in this Gypsy. I know it's rubber powered, but these things can still travel and get to great heights and get stuck in thermals. So I'm going to install the GPS tracker in it. First thing I'll do is I'll show you the equipment I'm going to use and then uh, I'll make up provision to actually hold it in the fuselage. When I use it on my Diamond Demon and my Quaker, I usually just drop it into the fuselage because there's no real provision to, uh, to hold it, which isn't ideal. So I'm thinking ahead with this model. Okay, well this is the equipment I use and it's made by a, a, a British company called uh, BNK and I, I've been using this over the summer and it works really, really well. I really like it and you can see I've put a six inch rule here just to show you the size of the equipment. So we've got a handset, we've got a small uh, transmitter and we've got two different batteries. Now we can have a look just at the weight of this, just to give you an idea. The, uh, the transmitters are <laughs> one gram. So you can see it's negligible. Now, you can have that with this small battery, which doesn't last that long. You get a few flights out of it, three grams. Or you can use a 100 milliamp hour battery, which is what I use. The, both these are LiPos. This is 100 milliamp hour and that is the one that I use, and that will la that set up there will last all day. There's lots of different functions on this simple handheld uh, receiver, the flexi display, 
and um, it will tell you exactly where it is and what direction it is when it's flying. Well I've really enjoyed using this setup and I found it really reliable. Uh, as I said it's a British company but I know they will send stuff to the US and to the rest of Europe so I mean it's not cheap but it works really nicely and it gives you a reading which you on your uh, flexi display which you can download onto your tablet or your computer and you can actually plot the course of your plane it gives you a reading every few seconds and it will not only show you on Google Maps or Google Earth the, the pattern of your plane flying around where it's been precise location to within a few meters but it will also tell you the altitude which is really really interesting and if you lose your model it's going to tell you the direction by looking at the hand display and how far it is and if you've gone out of range then you can go to the last setting that it picked up, the last location it picked up and you can track it from there hopefully. Like I say it's, it works really well, I'm not, I'm not going to go into any more detail about how this works but I will provide a link to the company in the description below this video so you can look at it and there's stuff online, the stuff on uh, YouTube which, uh, which will help you sort of get to understand what these do. But it's a really valuable I think thing to have in some of your vintage models if you're worried about losing them. So what I'm going to do is, as I said before, I normally just drop this in the fuselage which isn't ideal. So I'm going to make a little bit of a, set, uh, a, a plate, a little bit of a setup to hold this and then I can hold it secure in the fuselage and I'll use the bigger battery so it will be there for the whole flying day and then I can take it out. Right, well the last thing we want to do is overthink this and I mean I don't want to just drop it straight into the fuselage like I, I've been doing and I want to hold it secure. Now I don't want to stick anything to the actual transmitter itself. It's got a, a little bit of a hole there I think that's for the altimeter so it, it wouldn't be good to stick on velcro there and, and stick it to the fuselage. But I don't mind sticking Velcro on this uh, 100 milliamp hour battery. So I've made a little bit of a pocket, a sleeve for the transmitter to simply slip into. And I can put on Velcro on the battery and just stick that on like that. And that will hold it nice and secure. Now we're going to have a hatch here in the underside of the fuselage because I've got a servo that goes there to trigger the dethermalizer. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to glue that in place and then we can just slip this up into, uh, into the, the pocket and we'll just see how that goes. So let me just hold that still, see if I can do that without dropping it. There we go and then we can just stick that in place like that. Now the CG on this is here so it is slightly back of the CG but we're talking of just what was it I think it was about five grams for the whole setup so I think that will be a really good solution and in fact we can have a quick look and see what that whole unit weighs. Five grams there we go. So I'm going to get that installed now and then we'll have a look. Right well there we go I've got the tracker pocket installed and the tracker GPS tracker inside and ready to go. So much better than just dropping it in the fuselage and it, it does honestly give me peace of mind when I'm flying that if I have a problem there's a good chance I'm going to get my model back. So anyway like I said BMK have a look in the description for the website and uh, check it out if you're interested and, and see what you think. It's not the only uh, product like this on the market but I've had success with it I quite like it so anyway I need to get back on with the rest of the build of this uh, lovely 40 inch wingspan gypsy and I think in the next video I'm going to pull this one to a close now but in the next video I think we are going to start to uh, to get some of the covering done I think we've got to that stage now where that's the next job anyway hope you've enjoyed this thanks very much for watching